It is said that the first ever nativity scene was created at the request of St. Francis. It was a live recreation of the Bethlehem scene, complete with a living ox and ass. The idea being that even the illiterate of society would be able to understand the nativity narrative. Since then, it's been replicated millions of times with each country adding something different. In some parts of Europe, they add a washerwoman or even three men playing cards. Mm. Sometimes the items that are added by individual church nativity scenes are perhaps the most tender. For instance, in a local church not far away from us, they included a small toy lion. The story goes that a child had once left their loved toy for the baby Jesus. So for years after that, it seemed heartless not to include it. But sometimes, as lovely as it may be to add a washerwoman or a toy lion, or even to debate where the main characters should be placed, are we not really missing the point? Do we not sometimes concentrate on the where and when and miss out on the really good news? It's great that the angels told the shepherds about Jesus, but don't we need to know that the good news in our night fields of our lives. It's great to know that Jesus was laid in a manger in Bethlehem, but shouldn't we also cradle him in the manger of our lives? So why do people turn up at Christmas, even if it's their one and only trip to church of the year, to sing some carols, gaze at the nativity scene, but perhaps also to reach out to catch that tingling atmosphere that is the real, true Christmas. It may be that we all understand that we need to know that that child is born again, born again and new in our lives, as we watch and wait and concentrate on the manger. What if it's our own manger, our own space within us of warmth and comfort that we bring for Jesus? And if it is, what do we bring? Is it a manger that brings darkness? Because today it's filled with the brightest of lights. Is it a manger full of confusion? The wonderful counsellor is here for you. Is it a manger of impossibilities? Right now, the mighty God is here for you. Is it a manger of conflict? Spend time with the Prince of Peace. Is it a manger of loneliness? Today it's filled with the one that said, I am always with you till the end of the age. Is it a manger of violence? The most gentle one waits here for you. Is it a manger of guilt or regret? Today be in the presence of the merciful one. Is it a manger with feelings of abandonment? Because a good shepherd is here and he will find you. Is it a manger of hunger or poverty? Eat today the bread of life. Is it a manger of thirst? Drink the cup of salvation. Is it a manger of grief? Look to the one who said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Is it a manger of death or loss? Today is filled with the giver of life. Jesus' manger, our manger, hold all this and so much more. His manger can never be emptied of its power and meaning. It is the very spot where God's life and our life meet and intersect. Never forget that the manger is a feeding trough. It's the place where our lives are fed, sustained and recreated in the midst of our life circumstances. Loving God, 
we bring before you our lives, with all their problems and worries, with all their joy and excitement, safe and secure, that you will never turn us away, but welcome us with open arms and a heart full of love. Amen.